OK, games developers. I'm not asking for much here. All I want from you is some commitment. You want to make a stealth game? Make a stealth game. You want to make a spectacle fighter? Make a spectacle fighter. Fine. Just don't try to crossbreed them. The two have never successfully bred in captivity, and when they're forced to by gene splicing, you get the retarded, mutated offspring that is this week's subject. It won't like you for it, and it will take every opportunity it can to kick you in the balls. With that being said, let's see why this doesn't work. Hey there guys, it's Salus, and today I have the pleasure of announcing to the YouTubeiverse, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I'm bad at this. The appearance of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is actually quite pretty. The environments are very cyberpunk, as you would expect with any game about a cyborg ninja. The environments have a lot of glass and steel, which would normally make things look sterile and clinical, but in this game it gives a great feeling of the robot-friendly world. Raiden also has augmented reality goggles, which changes the appearance by making everything blue and objectives on obnoxious neon orange. And this I do have issue with, because it makes everything seem flat and lifeless in a world as rich and well designed as this. Using this, which by the way you're forced to at points, removes so much character. The animation quality throughout is fantastic. The speed of the game is matched by the smoothness of the animations, giving the player a real feeling for what it would be like if you were a cyborg ninja, attacking very fast and ninja running to avoid obstacles with great speed and agility. Even the robots' animations are great and fairly detailed. For instance, the gecko robots have a very powerful leap which can scale a building in a single bound. But you actually see the joints in the legs react to the impact when they land. But let's stop dancing around the issue and talk about Raiden's design. For the most part, Raiden's body does look badass. But I do have issue with his face. First of all, his left eye ends up getting replaced by what appears to be a, me a mechanical snake wrapped around his head. A solid snake, if you would. And the other issue, why did they decide to put his teeth on the outside of his jaw? I'm sorry, I can't take that seriously. It looks like someone handed half a skull to Raziel and told him they can't tell the difference. But, weapon design in this game is quite varied, although they do all have the limitation of being based on Eastern martial arts weapons as you would expect with a ninja theme. There's the high frequency katana, which is a traditional ninja weapon, then there's the combination bow staff and whip, made out of robot arms, which is kind of cool. And there's a pair of electromagnetic psi, just to name some of my favourites. And each of these looks absolutely beautiful. But that doesn't, stop, that doesn't stop them insisting on telling you to use guns. There are also many types of grenades. There's a rocket propelled grenade launcher, a homing missile launcher, but to be fair, I always tried not to use these, because the game didn't suggest they were as important as they actually are. Finally, let's talk about enemy design. This game seems to have gone all out on design work. Particularly with the enemies, you've got the generic dudes and cybernetic samurai warriors, then there's giant sentient tanks and robots based on creatures ranging anywhere from dogs to gorillas. These designs are of course key to defeating them. The designs are memorable, so as allow you to easily remember which points on them are the weak points and which can be hacked off when needed. And the bosses are probably some of the best designed cyborgs I have ever seen in my life. There's one kind of based on Medusa, and then there's another whose body has a modular design and can separate at will, and another who looks a bit like Dr. Octopus has replaced his arms with shields and been taking steroids for about a year. Unfortunately, as I'll come back to later, they seem a little too proud of their art assets. The sounds in this game are an okay bunch. The sound effects are fairly good if you ignore the guns, some of which sound like someone pulling their thumb out of their ass. The swords and melee weapons do sound like they're making an impact and have some real force behind them. Even in the much touted blade mode, you do get a feel as to how effortlessly Raiden's sword slices things up. And of course, some Metal Gear sounds make a combat, like the codec call noise, which, after the billionth call, gets a little annoying. 
but it's nice to see it's trying to be a Metal Gear game. The music in the game is nothing special. In fact, I found it fairly forgettable. Honestly, nothing about the music is anything I'd ever want to revisit at any point. Now, the voice acting. Oh, the voice acting. This is something of a joke in places. For instance, for the first half of the game, Raiden sounds like he's trying to sound like Batman in a gravelly tone which he thinks sounds cool. But it's like having your ears sanded. But after a key point in the game, he changes his voice and sounds more like Raiden from the Mortal Kombat movie. Which again is like sandpaper for the ears. It's bad enough that Raiden is a complete tool, but he shouldn't have to assault us with his voice as well. And he's got his quirky tagalongs, and they're a bit of a mixed bag. There's the German doctor called Doktor, a Russian guy unironically named Boris, and at times these two characters, who call you more often than any other, do sound a bit similar. Almost like they were voiced by the same guy who only knows how to do one vaguely European accent. There is the token black guy who actually sounds human and not as stereotyped as I have seen in some games. But that being said, George is the most racist thing I've ever heard from a child. He constantly speaks in pidgin English, to the point whereby if you don't have subtitles enabled, you won't understand a single word he says. He sounds like one of those 13 year old white boys who thinks it's cool to try and sound like a black guy and it just comes off as insensitive. But by far the best voice acting in this ragtag bunch of idiots comes from Raiden's new pet, who is also the level 2 boss. Cheerfully nicknamed the K9000, he's a self-righteous AI controlled prototype UG, which Raiden defeats and has reprogrammed as his personal friend. Because, you know, man's best friend is a dog, Cyborg's best friend is a robot dog. And this character knows it's smarter than others, and he frequently reminds them. From a human character, or in this case from a cyborg character, this would be obnoxious and annoying. But from an AI, it's understandable, and it's key to the character. But enemy voice acting I have a major issue with. With the exception of the K9000, who is the second level boss, all the other boss battles, they seem to have been pulled right out of a Saturday morning cartoon. The performances are over the top, and it makes them into a ridiculous caricature of a villain. I don't know if this is what they were actually shooting for, or if it just kind of happened. Either way, it's still bad. Now, the gameplay is where I have so many problems. First of all, Raiden is an emo bitch, as well as being a complete tool. There are parts where he's injured and he gets an arm lopped off so he kind of stumbles around only able to swing wildly but slowly with his sword. Which is fine and understandable because he's only got one arm and he's bleeding out. But he also does this when he's sad. And when there were 13 cyborgs itching to castrate him, it's the most emo thing you've ever seen. It's like, oh I'm upset, I'm just going to walk really slowly and only use one arm. Oh, these guys want to cut my head off, why won't they leave me alone? And as if emo twatty riding wasn't slow enough, the controls have a massive delay on the PS3, and you have to push buttons a good second or two before you want to use them. This makes the quick time events ridiculous, because they're so brief, and I know, I know, if they're not quick, they're just time events. But humans do not possess the kind of precognition you expect from them, game. These slow inputs make the Space Harrier minigames, yes, they're in this too, near impossible. There's a part where you're running vertically up a building because gravity, what the fuck is that? And enemies are bombing the area. Unfortunately, despite how vigorously and enthusiastically I told, how I told him to, Raiden would not move out of the way of the bombs for some time. This resulted in many an insta-fail. The combat is also a piss take. I know I asked for commitment at the start of this review, but this isn't the kind of commitment I wanted. Raiden seems to commit fully to a combo and there's no way to break out of it. So if something like a missile is heading your way mid-combo, 
It's just a case of open your mouth, Raiden. I've got something long and hard to put inside you. Also, Raiden gets stunned more than a suicidal insect with a solar-powered bug zapper. And breaking out of this stun lock takes way too long, and by the time you've escaped, you've already taken about three swords to the balls and died. Now, there is a parry system in the game, but it barely works. You have to aim your strike at the exact same direction that your enemy is striking, and time your counter swing down to the last millisecond. Which, in a spectacle fighter, a game based around mashing two buttons very, very fast, is hopeless. Especially if Raiden is mid-combo at the time he needs to counter, then it's like he's too busy to protect himself. And the big new mechanic in this game, and it's so proud of it, is Blade Mode. An overpowered system that allows Raiden to slice up anything he wants with S-Swing in any direction the player can imagine. And it's also an insta-heal. Now this is incredibly easy to heal yourself with, if and when the camera decides it wants to behave itself. On, let's say, more than one occasion, upon entering blade mode, the camera has turned right the fuck around and faces away from the enemy. Meaning I take surprise swords up the arse because of the dodgy camera. But the worst part about blade mode is it tries to use the right analog stick in combat. Listen, games industry, the right stick is for camera only. He doesn't like combat. He's perfectly happy working a camera as long as he doesn't have to deal with anything. And trying to use both sticks to control a core mechanic simultaneously becomes like trying to hold onto a bar of wet soap with oily hands. And insisting on precision while simultaneously trying to juggle these two sticks who clearly don't like each other is just an excuse for you to hold us at arm's length and kick us in the balls. Boss fight mechanics are also a nutshot. There's one boss who becomes unhittable at points during the battle. And while you can't hit him at all, he can still slap you around like the cybernetic bitch you are. You're supposed to hit him with an EMP grenade, but he moves way too much and way too quickly, and the grenades take far too long to detonate. So if, say, he's dodged all five of your grenades because you're only allowed to carry five, you might as well just suck on his blade and retry. The game also seems way too proud of its boss fights. Before boss fight number four, you have to face boss fight three and then boss fight two again. And the reason they're still alive after being carved up like a Christmas ham not 20 minutes before is pulled right out of the game's arse. And it results in you having zero healing items for the main boss fight. Who, by the way, with no healing items is harder than, a, is harder than diamond nails being held by Chuck Norris on steroids. Okay, story spoilers inbound. Put a steel bill on your head and bang it with a spoon if you don't want to hear them. That done? Good. So, the story starts out with the Prime Minister of some African nation being kidnapped and murdered by a bunch of cyborgs who are pissed off at Raiden for making Africa, you know, too peaceful and shit. And it turns out they work for a PMC who is, you guessed it, evil. Like we haven't heard that a million billion times before. And one of the cyborgs slices up Raiden's face good and proper. But we can rebuild him. We have the technology, apparently. So, fresh with a new face and a snake over your ocular implant, no doubt as a reference to Solid Snake. You know, the character everyone would rather be playing right now. You start chasing after this PMC dressed as a mariachi performer. And you find out they've been doing terrible things to little boys. So Raiden, being a bit paternal as well as being a general douchebag, vows to stop the evil PMC from harvesting brains like the Furon Emperor and turning them into a whole new race of Jack the Rippers. But it turns out the PMC is under the heel of some corrupt senator who sold the local police force to that PMC and they station military cyborgs where good old-fashioned coppers would do. But you slaughter your way through armies of cyborgs, police officers and better models than you and seek to rescue the brains of these children, which apparently can go through VR training long after being removed from any form of blood supply. And honestly, this isn't a new story. Nothing really in this game you haven't seen in like 40 or 50 different games before. The only thing they've added is a really emo protagonist. And to me, that's not fun. 
It's not an engaging story, and it's completely forgettable or interchangeable. Now, as you've probably gathered already, the controls for this game are awful. And as it's a console exclusive, I got it to PS3, and I'll be damned if I'm going to test the Xbox version. Konami don't deserve more of my money for this. The controls are laggy and require precognition in order to get them to actually work. Using the right stick for blade mode is a joke because it leaves you at the mercy of the autonomous camera, which seems to want to show you the art assets more than the gameplay. And with no dodge button, making this a spectacle fighter was the dumbest idea ever. Now this week, optimization is irrelevant. As it's console exclusive, it runs as it should on all the systems it was released on. Replay value. The replay value in this game, assuming you actually beat the story at all, comes in the form of collectible VR missions you collect through the main story. And honestly, I'd hate to be the obsessive type who missed VR mission 12 and went straight from 11 to 13, because that means I would have had to put up with the main story again. These VR missions don't really add anything new. You've already seen the VR world enough with the various tutorials it puts you through, and they put you into a VR training simulator anyway. And I don't think this is the best form of replay value. Of course, if you're a glutton for punishment, you could do the story again and get all the battle points to fully upgrade our emo hero, I suppose. So in conclusion, this game tried to be a spectacle fighter with a heavy stealth focus, forgetting the cardinal rule, of course, that these two are mutually exclusive. There's no way anyone can stealthily slice a robot in half with a big-ass sword in broad daylight. It's not completely mechanically broken, when the stars align and the gods smile upon you, it works. Just not very well. The story is overused and the characters are either annoying, boring, or just downright offensive. And in my honest opinion, Hideo Kojima needs to let the series die here, with what little dignity remains in the property. Before the next game, of course, Metal Gear Rising Racism! An RTS RPG with a hack and slash combat system you're not supposed to use, and your main character is George. I give Metal Gear Rising Revengeance 3 out of 10. So, thank you for watching this week's review. Be sure to like and or favourite this video. And if you haven't already, mash that subscribe button. I've been Salas, this has been Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and I will see you next time.